All right, in today's video, we're gonna clear up some important supplement misinformation to help you save time, money, and effort so that you can get the very most bang for your buck from your supplement plan and just from your overall fitness plan in general. Supplements can be a really tricky subject for most people because while there are a select few ingredients that can be beneficial in terms of optimizing training performance, body composition, and overall health, the vast majority, probably at least 90% or more, they really are just straight up bullshit. They use unproven ingredients that aren't backed by solid research. Even when legit ingredients are used, they tend to be underdosed and used in lower quality forms. They're overhyped, overpriced. A lot of times the labels aren't even accurate. And in some cases they can even be straight up sketchy in terms of their safety profile. So this is an area where you really need to do the proper research first, okay? Don't just take all the flashy hyped up marketing at face value because believe it or not, most of the companies selling these products do not have your best interests at heart. It's really just about making money more than anything else. So let's go over today's list of five overrated supplements. And uh, this is definitely not a complete list, but I don't want this video to drag on for three hours. So these are five of the major ones that stand out. All right, in no specific order here, the first overrated supplement on the list is beta alanine. Now, some people might be surprised by this one because beta alanine is usually thought of as a legit supplement. And it is one of the few compounds available that does have a pretty solid amount of research behind it showing measurable effects. But for most people who are doing standard hypertrophy-based weight training workouts where gaining muscle is the primary goal, beta alanine probably isn't gonna do anything particularly noticeable for you. And that's because it only has performance benefits on sets that last at least 60 seconds. It's more of uh, an endurance-focused ingredient. And if you go ahead and time your sets, unless you're someone who regularly trains in really high rep ranges, chances are that most, if not all of your sets are not gonna be lasting that long. And then even if they do last that long, the actual benefit is gonna be very minor. On top of that, you also have to deal with the beta alanine itch, which is that sort of pins and needles feeling that you get on the surface of your skin after you consume it, which some people enjoy, uh, but I'd say most probably don't. Personally, I find it pretty annoying. Why the fuck does pre-workout make you so fucking itchy, bro? Bottom line here, guys, if you do center your training around very high rep ranges, or you wanna use it for cardio sessions, or you just enjoy the feeling of a tingling scrotum during your workouts, then supplementing with beta alanine could make sense but for the vast majority of people, you know, the typical gym bro who wants to gain muscle and lose fat and is following a typical hypertrophy style program, beta alanine probably just isn't worth it. And one other thing to keep in mind if you are using it is that beta alanine doesn't have any acute effects on workout performance. Uh, just like with creatine, it's something that you supplement with every day and it gradually saturates your muscles over time. So if you're using a typical pre-workout that has uh, say two or three grams of beta alanine in it, and you're taking that maybe three to four days per week, then you're ultimately gonna be underdosing. To get the full benefits, you're gonna to need to buy pure beta alanine separately and take that on your off days. Otherwise, you're just gonna be paying for uh, an extra ingredient in your pre-workout that really isn't gonna be doing much for you in the bigger picture. All right, supplement number two is gonna be any form of creatine that is not creatine monohydrate. So one really common tactic that's used in the supplement industry and just fitness marketing in general, and even just marketing in general, is to create an imaginary problem in order to sell you a solution to that imaginary problem. And the creatine space is a prime example of this where companies have taken creatine monohydrate, which is a high quality, thoroughly research backed ingredient that is safe and effective and affordable, and then just made up a bunch of lies about it so that they can sell you their new and improved form of creatine for multiple times the cost. Uh, you've got creatine hydrochloride, creatine nitrate, buffered creatine, creatine ethyl ester, effervescent creatine, creatine serum, and I'm sure there's gonna be plenty more to come in future years. So you'll hear claims like creatine monohydrate causes bloating or cramping or that it isn't fully absorbed or that it's dangerous because it converts to the waste product creatinine and that this advanced form of creatine somehow solves all of that. In reality, this is just a bunch of Horseshit. Monohydrate is extremely bioavailable. Your body will absorb nearly 100% of it. It will fully saturate your muscles with creatine and it's never been shown to be unsafe or have uh, unwanted side effects in otherwise healthy people. So there really isn't anything more you can ask for than that. And this is shown in the research as well. For example, buffered creatine was found to be no more effective than creatine monohydrate. Creatine ethyl ester is actually less absorbable and converts to creatinine at a higher rate. Creatine serum is also less effective probably because the creatine 
breaks down over time when it's put into liquid form. Creatine hydrochloride is the only one that's ever been shown to have any specific benefit in the sense that it does saturate your muscles with creatine at a slightly lower dose compared to creatine monohydrate. But even when you equate for the dose, it still works out to be more expensive anyway. So at the end of the day, creatine monohydrate is still king and there's just no good reason to use any other form because they're all gonna be way more expensive while being equally or less effective. Just take three to five grams of creatine monohydrate once per day at any time mixed with whatever you want. And after two to three weeks of doing that consistently, you'll have all the benefits that creatine supplementation has to offer for as long as you continue using it, which is increased intramuscular water volume and a slight boost in lifting strength, which can then help to improve muscle growth over the long term, assuming you're on a properly structured routine. Overrated supplement number three on the list is going to be any product that claims to increase testosterone levels or growth hormone levels. Now, yes, there are certain compounds that technically can increase testosterone or increase growth hormone, but you have to keep in mind that that doesn't really mean anything on its own. What you have to ask is what kind of increase are you getting and over what time period? Is it actually high enough and sustained for long enough to measurably improve muscle growth or fat loss? The reality is that outside of actual testosterone supplementation or actual growth hormone supplementation, none of these over-the-counter ingredients are going to do that for you. Tribulus, maca root, diaspartic acid, long jack. At best, you might get a small libido increase from these sorts of compounds, but in terms of building muscle, it's just gonna be a complete waste of money. And also keep in mind that this whole concept applies to training and nutrition as well, uh, not just supplementation. In other words, you know, maybe you've heard that intermittent fasting increases growth hormone and that makes it superior for fat loss. Well, yeah, you might get a small temporary boost from that, but it's not gonna be significant enough to directly influence body composition. Or maybe you've heard that squats and deadlifts increase testosterone and so you'll build bigger biceps by doing that uh, but same deal there you know it's a transient spike but it's not powerful enough to where it's going to increase total body muscle growth so always remember that just because someone tells you that technique x is going to increase hormone y and therefore you should do it it's really not that simple the only area where supplementation could improve testosterone levels in a meaningful way is if you're lacking in certain micronutrients that play a role in testosterone production. So vitamin D, zinc, magnesium, those would be the primary ones. Uh, a pretty high percentage of people don't get enough vitamin D in general, and then intense training can deplete zinc and magnesium, especially if you're sweating a lot. So depending on how much direct sunlight you're getting per day and what your diet is like, that could be something to pay attention to. And that's also why we included those three as primary ingredients in our Real Science Athletics MicroCore product, which uh, is essentially a bodybuilding and fitness tailored micronutrient blend. That's actually our top selling product at the moment. And I'll link it up here as well as down below in the description box. But again, just keep in mind that these ingredients are not testosterone boosters that are gonna send you up into some kind of super physiological range. It's just about helping to optimize your existing levels and keep you in a healthy range when done in combination with proper lifestyle choices, stress reduction, sleep, exercise, good nutrition, etc. If you're finding this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay in the loop on future uploads. And item number four on the list is gonna be weight gain powders. Now these products might seem appealing if you're naturally thin and you're wanting to pack on overall mass, but keep in mind that number one, you don't even need a huge calorie surplus to maximize muscle growth to begin with. Uh, a couple hundred calories above maintenance is usually enough to optimize your gains and dirty bulking beyond that point is just gonna result in excessive fat gain. Uh, trust me, I've been there. And as you can very clearly see, that is not a road you want to go down. And then number two, most of these weight gain powders are really just a basic mix of whey protein and simple sugar, usually maltodextrin. So if you have a smaller appetite and you're having a harder time getting in all the calories you need, instead of running out and buying a massive bag of Mass Gainer 5000, a much better tasting and healthier choice is to just buy a high quality protein powder on its own and then blend in your own sources of carbohydrates and fats. Back in my younger bodybuilding obsessed days, this was my standard approach. I remember making these massive homemade weight gainers every day and just drinking them straight from the blender. A good option is to use milk as a base or uh, coconut milk if you want to boost the calories even further. And then you can mix in things like fruit, oats, yogurt, nut butters, uh, seeds, oils like flaxseed or olive oil. And if you still want to increase the calories further, you could toss in some dark chocolate, some avocado, uh, or even some ice cream. It's actually very easy to condense a really high number of calories down into a small volume if you just choose the right ingredients. And that'll give you all the calories and macronutrients you need to support muscle growth, plus the added vitamins, minerals, uh, fiber, and healthy fats that most weight gainer supplements don't have. Now, if you're on the go and you just like the convenience of a weight gain pack, 
powder, and you're just using it to make up a smaller percentage of your overall calories for an easy extra boost, then ultimately that's fine. But if possible, making your own homemade weight gainer shake is gonna be the better choice. All right, and lastly, overrated supplement number five is gonna be fat burners. Now, there are a limited number of compounds out there that can have a minor effect in helping you burn additional calories, but when it all comes down to it, the effects are gonna be pretty modest. And I would say that most fat burners are usually just way overhyped for what they actually are, which is typically just an over-glorified mix of various stimulant compounds. And really that's what the primary benefit of most of these fat burners is gonna be if there is gonna be any benefit at all. It's not that you're literally burning more fat as a direct result of these ingredients. It's more so just that when you take in all of these different stimulants, you're gonna feel more upbeat and more energetic, which can be helpful during periods of calorie restriction. And it's also gonna give you an appetite suppressing effect as well, which can make maintaining a calorie deficit a bit easier. Um, and there are certain certain non-stimulant appetite suppressants available as well, which can have a modest effect. So rather than calling them fat burners, a more accurate name would be something like calorie deficit support agent or fat loss aid. You know, to call it a fat burner is definitely a bit misleading. And I really don't think that ingesting and relying on a stimulant cocktail every single day over a long-term period, I don't think that's gonna be a good idea. So for these types of products, um, you know, I wouldn't rule them out completely, but I would say that they should only be used by a smaller percentage of people who can tolerate them well, who understand how they fit into the bigger picture and who are only using them for temporary phases. And no matter what, if you wanna achieve an impressively lean physique, the vast, vast majority of it is going to come down to a properly structured nutrition plan and a consistent training routine. Okay, please don't be one of these people who goes out and buys a fat burner and thinks that popping back these pills every day is going to have some significant effect all on its own because it most definitely will not. If anything, it's just a tiny little boost once every other aspect of your cutting plan is already optimized. All right, and lastly here, just as a quick addition to the list, overrated supplement number six. I've gone over this a million and one times on the channel, so I don't want to sound like a broken record here, but just very quickly, the list wouldn't be complete without also mentioning BCAAs and EAAs. Okay, as long as you're eating enough total protein for the day, you're already getting in all the amino acids that you need to maximize muscle recovery and growth, and just dumping a bunch of extra aminos on top of that is not gonna benefit you further. Branch chain amino acids and essential amino acid blends are completely unnecessary in the vast, vast majority of cases. And by the way, if you're tired of all the hype and BS out there in the supplement industry in general, and you just wanna cut through all the gimmicks and check out some honest, legit legitimate formulas that use research-backed ingredients in their highest quality forms and proper dosages in order to optimize body composition, training performance, and overall health, then you can visit realscienceathletics.com by clicking up here or in the description box. These supplements were all formulated by me from scratch to help you get the very best results possible. And you can use code YouTube15 to take 15% off your first order. Here are two more videos you can check out now. You can also sign up for a free training and nutrition plan from me over at seannell.com custom. Uh, by filling out the short form on that page. I'll also link that up here and down below. Thanks for watching the video guys and I will see you in the next one.